The people who talk about markets like to often use the word free. What they seem to mean when they thought about it or explain themselves is it's a market that isn't regulated by some political authority, a market with no rules, no regulations, where buyers and sellers confront one another and bargain and reach a mutually agreeable rate of exchange, each for whatever it is they have and each for whatever it is they want. I get that idea. But here I'm going to be an economic historian, something I have taught all my adult life as a professor in the United States and something I share with other professors of economic history. The free market that I just described has never existed. It is a figment of the imagination of people. It is also a wildly utopian image. We don't have that. Every market that I have ever studied, whether it's ancient Greece right up to the present, is full of regulations. The notion that we can have a market without regulations is refuted by the fact that every time a market has been created as the way to distribute goods, it has immediately had so many bad effects that regulations had to be brought in to counter them. For example and it's really important to understand this. In a free market, wages can be very low. Capitalist pays as little as he can get away with, and if they're desperate people who need to, to survive, they will work for next to nothing. This creates a, a, a vast population of very poor people, often in capitalism. And guess what? We bring in a regulation. It's called the minimum wage, so you can't do that. Here's another example. Some companies get into a position where they're the only company producing something, and they can jack up the prices because you've got nowhere else to go. Think of your local utility. You don't have six utility companies to choose from. You don't have six, et cetera, et cetera. So those companies jack up the prices. You know what we have as a result? The antitrust division of the Justice Department to break up the monopolies because if you let the market go, the competition among many becomes comes a few, and then they do what they always do, and in come the regulations. There's a good reason why we have regulations, because markets have undesirable effects. So let's talk a little bit about them. First, let's remember what a market is. A market says that there are goods that people want. Let's suppose ice cream cones, for lack of a better example ice cream cones. Let's suppose there are 20 ice cream cones that are available for sale. And let's suppose that there are 50 people who want an ice cream cone. So the supply of ice cream cones, 20, and the demand for ice cream cones, 50. What happens? Very easy to understand. Let's suppose the sellers of ice cream cones are ready to sell them at 20 cents a pop. Well, the richest people out of the 50 immediately realize there's only 20 cones and there's 50 of us. But I've got a lot of money, so I'm going to offer 25 cents. Oh, no, says another rich person. I'm not going to stand by while he gets it for 25. I can afford 30. And another rich one said, well, I can afford 50. You see what happens? The price gets bid up. As we teach in economics, the demand being greater than the supply, the price goes up. The idea being those with the most money can keep raising the price because they can afford to pay. But as the price goes up, the poorer people have to drop out of the race because they can't afford $2.18 for a cone. So guess what happens? When the dust settles, the 20 cones go to the people willing to spend the most money to bid up the price because they don't care because they're rich. They'll pay $5 a cone. In other words, what markets do is distribute whatever is scarce to the people with the money. The most money wins. Well, if the market is a game in which those with the most money win, then it's a game that favors the people with the most money. This is not rocket science, friends. The market is a system that favors 
the rich, which is why the rich love markets.